There's a saying that I really like. If something's weird, it's an opportunity to expand your understanding. And I'm talking about the subatomic world today, which is weird, all right? It's just deeply, fundamentally strange. It's it's so weird, it's almost impossible to describe, even though I'm gonna devote a couple videos to it. Uh, but it, using language, like words in English, and, you know, whatever language of your choice, describing how the subatomic world works, describing how the quantum world works, is virtually impossible and it's more confusing than enlightening almost every single time. But this is exactly why we have mathematics. Mathematics allows us to grapple with concepts and make predictions and understand nature where human language fails. So the, the mathematics of quantum mechanics is perfectly straightforward. It, it describes behaviors, it makes predictions, it tells you what experiments will happen, like is boom, 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 as crystal clear as you could possibly make it. But then when we try to talk about it, when we try to translate this equation over into a bunch of words, things get a little messy and they get especially messy in a lot of ways. But today I'm gonna to talk about the wave-particle duality, this so-called wave-particle duality, where the objects in the subatomic world, tiny little things, act like waves, act like particles, act like both waves and particles, sometimes act like waves, sometimes act like particles. Like it's, it's a mess to try to describe behavior. And the reason it's a mess is that the entire quantum discussion is laden, is overloaded with hundreds of years of classical physics behind it. And in classical physics, things were either waves or they were particles. Like you could have two camps to the universe, the wave camp and the particle camp, and everything was fine until you start investigating weird things like the properties of light. And then like these descriptions don't work, but the words hang around, the words bias us, the words color our descriptions. And so we have to come up with ways around it. When nature is like, I don't care that you just decide to put the universe into two camps, waves and particles, I'm gonna do my own thing. And then we have to respond to nature and we're like, oh, we've been thinking about waves and particles for hundreds of years, what do we do now? We'll call the wave particle duality because we've got nothing better. So even the phrasing, the raw phrasing of the wave particle duality implies a bias. And so, so what is a wave? What is a wave? Like I'm, I'm gonna talk about light today and then next episode I'll talk about matter. And both light and matter exhibit particle properties and, and wave properties. But like, what is a wave? Well, just think of a wave, like an ocean wave. A wave is a wiggly thing. It's an oscillation, it's a disturbance. Waves can interfere with each other. Sometimes they can add together and make a big wave. Sometimes they can cancel each other out to make no wave at all. Some, they can spread around corners, right? They can turn corners, they can radiate out. Um, they can do all sorts of cool wavy things because they take up a lot of space and they're constantly wiggling, right? That's, that's the idea of a wave. But what about a particle? A particle's like a chunk. It's a thing. It's something you can, you can grab. You can't grab a wave. Like imagine trying to grab a wave, but you can grab a, a particle. You can hold it in your hand. It's a finite object. When particles interact, they bounce off each other. When particles travel, they, they travel as one little localized thing that you can just pluck out. It's like a bullet, right? And it seems like waves and particles ought to be totally different things. That if you're a particle, you're never gonna act like a wave. And if you're a wave, you're gonna, never gonna act like a particle. Except when we get enter the subatomic world and things like act like waves and sometimes act like particles. So like in the case of light, is light a wave or a particle? My favorite answer, is light a wave or a particle, is it depends. It depends. If I turn on the radio, or let's say I have a radio transmitter, like a big radio tower, it's emitting very, very wavy things, isn't it? 
right? Like, like I'm in the radio tower, I'm sending electron and it's going up and down, up and down, up and down in that tower. It's emitting electric waves that go like this. And there's big magnetic field waves that go like this. And it's like, it's very obviously a wavy thing. And if I were to splash you with radio waves and you could feel it, you'd feel your electrons going up and down. Just like if you're in the ocean, you'd feel yourself going up and down. Like it feels like a wave. But if I shoot you with, say, gamma rays, the story's different, isn't it? The gamma rays don't make you feel like up and down. No, they like shoot right through you. They can even like cut apart your DNA. And cause cancer. They can they can slice. They're like they're like tiny little bullets. But gamma rays are a form of electromagnetic radiation. Radio waves are a form of electromagnetic radiation. One acts like more like a wave, and one acts more like a particle. Is light a wave or a particle? It depends. And in some different kinds of experiments. Light will act more like a wave or more like a particle. So, like say. Black body radiation, you know, like like thermal radiation, the energy from hot things. Max Planck discovered in the late 1800s that the energy that was being released in the form of radiation by a hot thing came in discrete little chunks, quantized chunks, like, like light wasn't continuous. It was, it was chunky at a very fundamental level. That looks like a particle. Uh, Einstein with the photoelectric effect found that Radiation emitted from uh, a conductor, like a piece of metal, it also comes in chunks. Like that's a very particle-y thing. But then you have things like Maxwell's equations, which very, very clearly describe light as waves of electricity and magnetism. And then you have like the double slit experiment, which is kind of complicated. It like splits the difference between these two worlds. Like if I, if I, uh, if I shoot some light through a very narrow opening, where the opening is about the same width as the wavelength of the light, then I get something called a diffraction pattern, where if I project this light out onto a screen in front of that slit, there'll be like a bright spot here, and then a dim spot, and then a you know less bright spot, and a dim spot, and a less bright spot, going like this. It's called a diffraction pattern. Now, if I change the width of that opening, I get different stuff. Because that diffraction pattern is a very wavy thing to do. Like if I were to send water waves through a narrow channel, I get these radiated undulations that then pile up in the center and, and, and destructively interfere over here and constructively interfere over there. So I get that pattern. It's a very, very wavy thing to do. But if I op widen up that slit, open up that door even more, the light just passes through and I get no diffraction pattern at all. What's going on? Light is acting like a wave sometimes and acting like a particle sometimes. And depending on the physics of the situation that you're interested in, you can use one or the other and sometimes you have to use both. Right? Maxwell's equations are still correct. Right? Waves, electricity, and magnetism. We even use the word wavelength to describe light. And yet, Max Planck's results are still correct. A black body ration of light being quantized and made up of being tiny little chunks. Sometimes the chunky nature of light comes out more. And sometimes the, the wiggly, wavy part nature of light comes out more. When it depends... It depends on the wavelength of light and what it's interacting with. It depends on the energy. It depends on how much they're light. Like, it just depends. Is light a wave or a particle? Yes. Thank you so much for watching. Next week, I'll talk about matter also being particles and waves, which is even more confusing. But thank you so much for watching. If you did like what you see, I would appreciate uh, liking the video, sharing the video, subscribing to the channel, and especially going to patreon.com slash pmsire. There's a link somewhere around my head. And you can keep this show going. And we can keep talking about particles and waves and weirdness.